Welcome friends to another episode of Dan Trombley Music. Today we get a little bit gritty, a little bit dirty. We create a little bit of a kind of edgy electronica kind of cinematic hybrid track. Always trying to do something different, always trying to hone my production skills, always trying to keep you, my viewers, interested and push the boundaries of the kind of music that I do. So uh, we're using some uh, Spitfire Audio Neo, some Tundra. We got some guitar rig in there. Lots of fun stuff. Let's get right to it. Okay, so the big thing is I always talk about a catalyst with these recordings or any project. How do we get started? And this is one of those ones that I just stared at the computer for the longest time. I had absolutely no idea, like just nothing, just complete nothing. So I always start with a blank template, but that was making it even more daunting. So a while back I did a, I did a video on Guitar Rig 6 with uh, that XY patch, my favorite patch from that library. So I opened it up and this, uh, you can see that it was marked as part two. So the idea was I was going to do like kind of like a second part and kind of carry on. And I kind of got into it and I was like, well, a lot of what I talk about in this channel is that I'm always trying to use new patches and new sounds and try not to fall into like the same old, same old. That's what I preach all the time. So, you know, it's like I tell my kids all the time. It's like, do as I say, not, not as I do. Uh, so I thought, well, that's kind of disingenuous. So I'm like, okay, I got to. I gotta start something different here. So deleted everything, um, start over from scratch. So long story short, the guitar part in Guitar Rig actually was a creation of this. So just nothing was happening with the, with the keyboard. So grabbed my guitar, plugged it in, Guitar Rig, tuned her up, ready to go. And uh, I just literally opened up Guitar Rig and just started messing around with the uh, the presets and try to find something that I hadn't used before. So uh, the one I came across that uh, kind of struck me was, uh, what is this one called? Uh, fuzzy, fuzzy Formants. And I literally didn't, I didn't touch anything. I didn't change any of the presets. I left it in its uh, original thing. I know I'm always saying change, change this, change that. But anyway, for this project, I didn't. Now, if you're wondering why what's happening here, it's because I'm a keyboard player and not a guitar player. So when I'm recording other instruments, I'm uh, having to kind of fall into the uh, mercy of my production and mixing skills to help me out. So I literally, because there's like kind of like a little chord change in there, I recorded each part separately and then I spliced it all together. I was cheating a little bit maybe, um, but it gets the job done. So I literally, I think I had started with a, like two different guitar tracks. I kind of recorded the one part, then I overlaid the second part with the, where the changes were. And then I went back and I literally just cut and paste and, and just glued it all together. Now, when you're doing that and when you're doing any kind of audio editing with audio files, MIDI, you don't have to worry about this, but audio, you gotta make sure that you go in and you crossfade. Okay, you gotta add these little, little fade tool here. Fade tool, boom, there it is right there. Okay, you gotta fade it in, fade it out, otherwise you're gonna get like a little click when you're uh, cutting and pasting when you're dealing with audio. So just something to note. And uh, then of course you want you want to make sure that you're locking it into the grid. This, this whole project is on the grid, 160 beats per minute. Um, so that's what I did. So because this is the first track, um, this start off the whole project. I'm going to start off with this. I'll play it for you. And this is what it sounds like. <laughs> just a it's just a badass sound all right it sounds like i don't know something from the youtube pop album so it just it just jumped out at me and guitar rig is just like that okay native instruments there are sounds when you dig deep i've talked a lot about this on the channel but you know if if you maybe don't go for their strings and that sort of thing their orchestral stuff 
and you just go for like their electronica kind of sounds like battery four is just as good as it's ever been guitar rig is better than ever their piano stuff is fantastic so they're still doing it man um so that started the track that was the uh, catalyst uh the next thing i think i went to after that was i went into spitfire uh Albion Neo. I'm like, I've been kind of going back and forth between Tundra. Got a little Tundra in this. I also got a little bit of Neo in here. So um, I know I'm kind of bouncing around here. Um, now, did I start with that? Actually, no, I lied. The second track was uh, Labs Drums from Spitfire Audio Labs Collection, which is extremely useful. I think I used it on my last video and I talked about distorting the sound. So I kind of carried on from that for this project. Okay, so uh, I'll play the drum sound uh, and then I'll show you how I processed it. Just a badass sound. Okay, this track is badass. Okay, that's what I was going for. I should have called it badass. Um, so it's just the uh, straight up labs. I think uh, I had turned down, there was, there was heavy reverb I, I had added initially through the plugin. I took it all away because I wanted to gate it. Uh, I don't know, I just like that sound. I added some clip distortion, which I was fooling around with on the last one, 70s stomp box, which, which was really cool. Uh, for the EQ, I rolled off a little bit of the high just to bring it back a little bit. And then I threw a gate on there uh, and uh, literally just, you know, always got to fool around with the threshold until you get it right where you want it. And uh, if I take all that stuff off, this is what it sounds like. Sounds just like kind of a standard uh, standard drum kit. Uh, and it sounds really good. The thing is about the labs that I like using for these projects is they're really punchy and really full. And they already sound like they're heavily compressed. And uh, they work really well. You can get really good results from, from these sounds very, very quickly. That's what Spitfire does. Uh, their sounds, they already sound amazing right out of the gate. So there's not a whole lot of processing. But... I just wanted to kind of wanted to mangle the sounds a little bit, and uh, because that distorted guitar led the way, I wanted to have the drums kind of match. So that's where I went afterwards, and then I think I went into the Neo, okay, and this is from the Sigla Textures, whatever you want to call it. It's called uh, a Vacuum, and I don't think I'd ever used this patch, and so I'm always trying to use stuff that I haven't used before. So this is what this sounds like. I think we're kind of carrying carrying on from like the Blade Runner type theme from uh, from last week. I'm not sure why, it just kind of came out like that. And then uh, I threw in another Neo patch. Uh, this is called, uh, is that the same patch? Is that also called Vacuum? Uh, I have Gated String, but actually that one I think is called Vacuum 2. Hang on a second here. Uh, gated, oh, I'm just in the wrong thing. Hello, hello Dan, sorry. This patch is called uh, Gated String. Let's hear what this is. I gotta start from the beginning. There's a little bit of automation going on here if you're wondering what's going on. I'll talk about that in a minute. Just really sneaks in. And it literally just kind of runs just underneath that uh, the vacuum track, okay? So just get some kind of rhythmic textures. I do this a lot with Spectra, Spectrasonics Omnisphere, but I um, thought I'd really kind of go into Neo and uh, Spitfire Audio. And then, speaking of uh, Omnisphere, I'm having all kinds of trouble with Omnisphere these days. I don't know what's going on or if I need to run an update, but uh, all kinds of logic crashes. Hopefully it doesn't crash during this uh, tutorial. This is called Little Sleep Puffs. Why wouldn't you want to have Little Sleep Puffs in your track? So what did I do? How did I process this? Um, I messed around with the low pass filter to, to again, to try to bring it so it's underneath. It's kind of sitting, uh, it's, it's, it's wrapping around those rhythmic textures underneath. And always got to be careful with the effects. Uh, in Omnisphere, uh, a whole lot of delays added. So you got to go in here and you got to get you got to get your hands dirty, and you got to pull some of that back. Otherwise, you're going to really clad up your mix. And uh, then I added, uh, I used the uh, arpeggiator, and uh, just 
kind of fooled around with this until I got it where I wanted. So again, it would kind of lock in with the tempo uh, of the track. So this is what this sounds like. I think last week's track sounded like I was in a submarine. So maybe I had that stuck in my head too. Um, so I got that and then I added some noir piano. No surprise there. I'll show you what I did with that. Okay, now initially I, I kind of had it just in its, uh, its kind of most basic form. But it sounded kind of like a little, eh, didn't really fit the track very well. Um, so I went in and uh, so I, this, there's no particles engine. I'm like, ah, I've probably been overusing the particles engine a little bit. So this is just straight up the noir, noir felt. And I went into the delay settings. And uh, so it's tempo synced. So it locks the 160 BPM. And then I, uh, I fooled around with the feedback so I could get a little bit of, of delay going on there. So if I play the track without the delay, oops, all right, I just cycled here. I'll take the delay off. Sounds very nice, but with the delay, just kind of matches with the track a little bit better, okay? And again, I talk about delay. You got to be careful with delay when you get all these rhythmic tracks in there. Um, you almost always want to tempo sync your delays. At least I do. Uh, so that is Noir. And then uh, it sounded maybe a little bit empty. So I went back in and this time I threw in some Tundra in there. So what do we got for Tundra? We are using the uh, Awesome Blade and Sky Bellows. I've used this before. This is a patch I really like. So let's check this out. Just kind of sneaks in there. <laughs> Got to be careful, man, because that, that sound will just eat up everything. But it is so good. There's so And when you hold the chords down, it just... It's like a never ending wilderness. It's like a cacophony of sound is what it is. Um, and then uh, I threw some more noir at the end of the track. So I always try to build these tracks, which is probably why I haven't had as much success being a library composer as I would have liked because my tracks always evolve from the start to the finish um, because it's more interesting to me and that's how I do it. Whereas library tracks should really, really fall within a box and a very specific parameter, which is hard for me to do. I'm always wanting to, I get bored very easily. So I'm always wanting to push it into the next thing and see what I'm able to create. But anyway, uh, the Noir track at the end is just a, just like kind of a rhythmic track. Very, very dry. It's a looped part and uh, it's mixed hard left because in the right channel, I copied that same part and I brought in uh, electric sunburst, also native instruments. Um, you know, their virtual guitar, so usable. Okay, this library is so good for adding rhythmic textures underneath. Um, really, really handy, handy. You can get things done very, very easily. It sounds amazing. Um, I just fooled around with some of the, some of the presets and literally just copied and pasted, and then I got this sound. Okay, and it just, just with enough reverb that it just kind of sets in there. That's a reverb, I think, that's built right into the thing. I, I don't think I have any external reverb. Really, try, you probably notice I'm using less and less reverb all the time. I think reverb is constantly overused in vocals, in projects. It's just like reverb, reverb, reverb. Yes, I get it. You have to use it for certain stuff, certainly for solo uh, sampled instruments. Without reverb, it's going to sound terrible. Uh, a little bit of, you know, plate verb for vocals, but I just keep pulling it back and pulling it back. And I think the reason is, is because I've been listening to a whole lot of Phineas, which I talk a lot about on this channel. Um, if you listen to his stuff, it's the vocals. They just, it just sounds like he's sitting right next to you. I know there's reverb on there, but it's got to be so minimal and it's so upfront and it's so 
intimate and it's so real. Um, I'm really enjoying it. So I think uh, because I'm listening to so much of his stuff, it's kind of coming into these projects. And I just, I feel like we just constantly throw reverb at stuff to try to cover our mistakes and uh, it doesn't always work. Okay, now there is there is a ton of reverb in this track because a lot of it's built in within the samples, especially when you're using the uh, pads, uh, you know, the Albion pads, um, you know, it's just full of like these long. And so again, you have to be careful with it, it doesn't cloud up the mix. And then I want a little bit of low end at the end. So I brought in Albion one, the octave low shorts, and literally just a repeated kind of ostinato part and I copied and pasted it and brought one down an octave lower because uh, they're played at the same time and I brought them in separately. So we can listen to both of those at the same time. Uh, I'll start here and then we'll do the other one. Come great, great sound, super punchy, super in your face, super aggressive. Um, those parts were played. There is the Ostanatum engine, which for sure you can get in there and you can get your hands dirty with that. Um, for me, I like to play those parts. But 160 BPM is pretty fast. So what I did was I, I brought the, the uh, BPM down when I recorded those parts because I was like, dee, 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 dee. <laughs> I could, couldn't play it, especially on a digital piano. Man. It was, uh, couldn't quite get it nice and crispy. So I dropped the tempo down and then I played it quantized it, locked it to the track, and then brought it back up to 160 afterwards. Uh, there is, I didn't add any, there's no external reverb added whatsoever. Brought the lush verb all the way down. As you can see, I went all the way close because they're low sounds and uh, there's already a lot going, swirling around in the mix. And uh, Phineas, I think would hate this song because, or he, he might not like my, my production because um, he tends to like things very, very clean and very, very neat. And if you listen to his recordings, they're so good. This is not like that at all. There's stuff kind of swirling out all over the place. But, you know, you take things from these great producers, but you still have to make it your own. Um, you know, I'm talking about this all the time. Don't try to sound like this person or that person. Take information from them and use it for learning purposes, but make it your own. Do your own thing. I can't emphasize that enough. And that's really what I try to do. You can hear influences in my stuff. I'm sure you can hear some Hans Zimmer. I'm sure you can hear... Um, you know, maybe some Johan Johansson in there, certainly some Peter Gabriel in there for sure. But at the end of the day, I'm hoping that I put all those together and I mix them up and I create something uh, unique. Uh, so I think for tracks, I think that's pretty much, much it. Again, kept the track count down really, really low. Not much processing going on here whatsoever. There's no external reverb added. Um, EQ'd the electric sunburst quite a bit, took out a quite a bit of low and quite a bit of high, just to, again, to kind of bring it back. So it, it just works with everything else. Um, and uh, drums, I already talked about bring, dropping down some low. Oh, I know what I forgot. I forgot the uh, battery track, Native Instruments battery. As good as it's ever been. It's just, I don't know, man, it's just a library that I still use all the time. I'm using the R O. I can't say that, Arc, Arcokokin. Arcakin kit. I have no idea how to say that. Um, I didn't mess around with anything. That's just straight up the kit. I'm pretty sure I didn't mess around with anything over here. But what I did do is I, again, rolled out the highs to bring it back. So let's uh, go and listen to that track. I'll play it without, first without my EQ, and then we'll throw the EQ in afterwards. already sounds really good and that's again that's the thing that's so good I, I like sounds that sound good straight out of the box and then you do some processing and depending on the project okay and then I just brought it down a little bit just to bring it so it wasn't quite so upfront and jarring uh, in the mix and I think now I've gone through every track uh, and that is it so guitar rig got this track going I had no ideas you don't have to be an incredible musician. You don't have to be uh, an incredible piano player. You don't have to be an incredible guitarist. You're in the digital realm. You can record these parts a gazillion times and until you get it right uh, and know your DAW and know your, how to process it and how to make it sound even better. You can cut and paste. 
You can lock things in a tempo. Um, with MIDI, of course, the possibilities are endless, but even with audio, I mean, it's just endless. Um, sometimes I use Guitar Rig just for its uh, effects. So you can take something like the Peel Guitar from Spitfire Audio, which is free in the Labs collection. You can run it through the effects through Guitar Rig, and you can play still play the guitar parts on the on the keyboard. So little things that you can get around with. So I like to use a little bit of virtual guitar. I like to use a little bit of real guitar whenever I can. And uh, you know, there's no right or wrong way of doing things other than just do something. And the the great thing about this channel is that. It just forces me every week. I got to come up with an idea. I got to get. I got to do something interesting, and it's forcing me. It's putting a little bit of pressure on me to write and record. And I'm just getting better at manipulating sounds. It's just it's practice, and I hope that you know you guys are uh, enjoying it too. And the and the feedback I've been getting, the comments I've been getting. Thank you for doing that. It means a lot. Um, and I hope that you continue to find these interesting. I'm gonna play the track now. We're gonna have some final thoughts and uh, we'll take it from there. So final thoughts, uh, keep pushing the boundaries, keep trying different things, uh, keep trying to play different instruments that maybe you're not comfortable with, try different production styles, different techniques, experiment, uh, get to know your DAW, get to know your plugins, 
uh, is there's just an endless possibility of different ways that you can manipulate sounds, create your own sounds. Uh, it just, it's never ending. We live in a really remarkable time of being able to, at our fingertips, play just with these incredible sounds. Uh, I haven't sampled my own sounds yet, but I think that's probably something that I'll probably be getting into uh, soon, creating your own sounds, um, kind of custom sounds uh, that are your own. And uh, so, you know, just experiment. I think that's really what, what this uh, boils down to. Um, if you haven't checked out some of my other videos in my profile, I've done a couple of artist series, one on Rachel D. Cook Cook and one on Josh Leek, two completely, totally different artists. One uh, really um, kind of a folksy sort of singer, reminiscent of Nora Jones from San Diego, and the other one, Josh Leek, an ambient artist from Pittsburgh. Um, wonderfully talented people. I can't say enough about them. I hope to do more artist profiles series soon. I've reached out to a couple other artists, some a little bit bigger name. Uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to doing those. I have so much fun hanging out with artists, getting to know um, where they're from, you know, their start in music, and just chilling and talking music and talking life. Uh, so that's it, my friends. Uh, Stay safe, get experimenting, and we'll catch you in the next one.